In the last video, we set up our application with the state, actions, and red user. In this video, let's learn how to use action creators with network requests. That is, how to make an API call when working with Redux. Now there are two packages that we need to install. The first one is Axios. Axios will be used to make GET requests to an API endpoint. The second package we will be using is Redux Thunk. This is a package from the Redux ecosystem and is the standard way to define asynchronous action creators in your application. The Redux Thunk library basically is a middleware we will be applying to our Redux store. Now, rather than me first explaining theoretically, let us dive straight into the code to understand how to define an async action creator using Axios and Redux Thunk. The first step is to install the two packages. So in the terminal, run the command npm install axios space redux hyphen thunk. The second step is to apply the redux thunk middleware to our redux store. For that, at the top, First, get hold of the apply middleware function from Redux. So const apply middleware is equal to Redux dot apply middleware. Next, in the create store method, pass it as a second argument, apply middleware. The argument to apply middleware will be the thunk middleware. So at the top, import it. Const thunk middleware is equal to require redux thunk dot default and then pass it as an argument to apply middleware. While we are at it, let's also make sure we import axios. So const axios is equal to require axios. All right, now our final step is to define the async action creator. I'm going to define a function called fetch users. This is an action creator. And what we have learned so far is that an action creator returns an action. But what the thunk middleware brings to the table is the ability for an action creator to return a function instead of an action object. So we can now return a function. And what is special about this function is that it doesn't have to be pure. So it is allowed to have side effects such as async API calls. And this function can also dispatch actions like the ones we have seen before. That is made possible because it receives the dispatch method as its argument. So dispatch. Now let's see how to make an Axios request and dispatch the necessary actions. For the request, we are going to be using JSON placeholder. If you scroll down to resources and click on users, we get the URL endpoint to make our get request. So back in VS code, within the function body, axios.get and then paste in the URL. If the request was successful, we get back the response. Here, response.data is the array of users. Now, if at all the request failed, we get back an error. So dot catch, and in this case, Error.message gives the description of the error. So we have made our Axios request. Now we dispatch the appropriate actions. Before we fire off our API call, we dispatch fetch user's request. This will basically set loading to true. 
When we get back the response, we are going to dispatch fetch users success passing in the list of users. Now what is the list of users? It is equal to response.data. But this would give us all the properties and our log will be flooded with data. Instead, I am going to use the map operator and return only the ID for each of the user. For each user, return user.id. So when the request is successful, we dispatch fetch users success action, which stores the user in our state. Similarly, if the request failed, we dispatch fetch users failure passing in error dot message. Finally, at the bottom, we subscribe to our store. And then dispatch this asynchronous action creator store.dispatch fetch users. This right here. If I now open the terminal and run the command node async actions.js, you should be able to see the logs. We first have the action fetch users request and the state is set to loading true. And then we have fetch users success where loading is set to false. We have the ID of the 10 users and error is an empty string. Now, if I quickly change the URL to an invalid URL and run this again, you can see that initially loading is true and then loading is false, users is an empty array, and the error is the error message returned by the API. So this is pretty much how you have async actions in your application. You import the Redux thunk middleware and pass it to the create store function. What this allows is for an action creator to return a function instead of an action. The function can now perform side effects such as asynchronous tasks. The function also can dispatch regular actions which will be handled by the red user. Now this concept holds good when you're working with React Redux as well. So keep this in mind and it'll be much easier to understand when we learn about data fetching with Redux in React applications. All right, with that, we come to the end of the features or concepts about the Redux library. Now that we know what it is capable of, starting next video, let's see how to pretty much do the same we have done over the past 10 videos, but this time with React as our UI library. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you guys in the next one.